out my coffee. Uh, I have no idea where we left off yet, but maybe. Um, I, I don't know. Anyway, um, so we're talking about uh, the article on uh, self-control revisited. Right? Why doesn't anyone actually read Skinner anymore? Um, I can tell you why. This is dry. But no, that's a joke, folks. You should read your Skinner. Um, that, that, that also doesn't mean it's deity. Just read it. Right? So, anyway. Ah, uh, failures of ABA, why under causes, such a generally retreat from our Ooh, yes, okay. Um, so we are, we were talking about what is the self, what is the control, all that fun stuff. Um, I got a little long-winded, so we're going to speed this one up a little bit. But I did want to focus on one other little thing here. When we start to go inside the organism, when we start to look for events it, and explanations inside of the being, and I don't mean biological stuff, that's a different level of analysis and we can have an old video on the levels of analysis, but we, we and we should, um, and we do, maybe, I don't know, but if we don't, we'll have it later. Probably it's one of these because it would be great. So, sorry, I digress. Um, when we go inside that organism, it's so easy to just posit things, to put things in there, and oh, that explains it, but you don't have any evidence for it, so we gotta watch out for that. So. Um, uh, a word of caution here. Uh, the problem apparently lacking in the result is a strong tendency in psychology to fall back to inner causes for explanations. Because the history of psychology, however, indicates that the pursuit of inner causes is not particularly profitable in terms of theory or practice. And he goes on. I think that point is often missed. Psych uh, science tends to make mistakes, right? It's okay, it's self corrective. But then you make the mistake again and self correct to make the mistake again. Um, there seems to be something associated with what we call general psychology, right? And this approach to keep going inside the organism. We try it, we've tried it over and over again, and it just doesn't get anywhere um, in terms of the core science until you go out and start looking at things in the environment. So uh, just be cautious of that when you're looking at your interpretations of behavior, especially with self-control. It is not inside the organism. It's a thing, it's a behavior you engage in, and we're gonna replace the term self-control with self-management by the end of this, this topic. Um, so, but we wanna get into self-reinforcement. Now this is really cool. Um, in here, Science of Human Behavior, Skinner talks about self-reinforcement. And if you read it on a superficial level, you'll walk away from it, assuming that Skinner's like totally behind the idea of self-reinforcement. Great, you can reinforce your own behavior. All you gotta do is um, engage in a uh, the delivery of a stimulus um, that has been shown to increase the probability of response contingent upon the response being performed. But you gotta do that to yourself. But he's not completely convinced that it exists. So if you, if you read this on the surface, you're gonna think that it's an okay thing. But if you dig in a little deeper, you're gonna, and you actually pay attention to the words, in other words, why do people actually read Skinner anymore? You're gonna find out that there's not a lot, even Skinner's like questioning whether or not self-reinforcement is a thing. Can you deliver them? Here's, I mean, Tom's done a great job about landing this stuff, but let me just put it in context for you really easily. If you could do that, you wouldn't have a self-management or self-control problem in the first place. If you could withhold your access to the reinforcing stimulus that I'm going to call ice cream, right, then I wouldn't have this belly right here. Right? Why? Because I have a self-management issue. I'm going to short circuit myself. I'm only going to deliver reinforcers once I've done a particular behavior that made a healthy response or whatever. But I can short circuit that by just going and getting the ice cream. And it's that short-circuiting that probably led me to develop the self-management plan in the first place to have to go to the gym before I give myself access to ice cream. But that's an odd problem because if I could do that, I wouldn't have had to. <laughs> right? So it is the self-management problem in a nutshell. If, if there is an ability to reinforce self-reinforce, and it's questionable. There's some literature that shows it. There's quite a bit that doesn't. Um, I tend to be along the lines of not supportive of genuine concepts of self-reinforcement. Um, you can sure try. That's, I don't think that's going to hurt you. Um, but I do believe that it's, it, there's, it's lacking in empirical support to say that I can reinforce my own behavior. Um, which pains me to say, because I want to just, I want to say that you can. So anyway, um, Skinner doesn't completely buy into it. Um, some authors do. Some books, I got stacks of books back here. Um, some of those books do as well. Um, but uh, the, the evidence is questionable when you start to dig into it. Um, so anyway, keep that in mind. So let's see what else is important here. Oh, ecological validity is a big issue when you're looking at self-management and uh, engaging in behaviors that uh, are used to manage your own responses. Uh, 
to do this research, to do these studies, you want to be out in the actual world in which they happen. These contrived situations inside the laboratory don't necessarily generalize. So that's an important point that uh, Dr. Brigham makes through here. Um, so reciprocity, we covered that in the last video a little bit. Just remember environment influences behavior, behavior influences environment. Uh, and that's something we can definitely do. Oh, uh, and that, that definitely fits within a radical behavior perspective. Um, so. But be cautious with adding that O. So conscious private events, um, this is a fun one. Um, so they may reveal connections about your environment. They kind of just describe things, right? Um, so another behavior analyst once told me that the idea of what your the kind of that running thought, the consciousness is, it's more like a tape recorder. It's like recording the events that you're observing in the world. Um, and that and then repeating those back to someone, well, there's a lot of errors that you make. Um, as, as Tom here says, unfortunately, imprecise conditioning operations produce the verbal repertoire for describing private events. <laughs> um, in other words, people are just full of shit. Um, and I, you know, sorry for shortening that up, Tom, but you know what, that's just true. So in and metaphysical causing the physical, uh, we gotta worry about things like mind causing physical things. So 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 that's a that's an issue in here to worth worth reviewing. Let's see what else. Well doing to accurate measures. Oh yes, yes, I forgot how the technician reads the dials. That was a great section. Self-monitoring, I'm thinking. When you're monitoring your own behavior, you really got to be cautious with a couple of things. I think the most important thing when you're monitoring your own behavior, if you're taking away from this, is making sure that what you're measuring is an, is an accurate representation of what you're actually trying to measure. So self-monitoring, um, if you're tracking the number of cigarettes smoked, um, maybe you should track the number that you actually smoked and not what you think you smoked. So make sure you have accurate representations. There's a little bit more detail in here than that uh, that's important. Uh, and self-instructions um, seem to be very useful, so basically an antecedent intervention. However, um, they're really just rule-following behavior, so you can reinforce rule-following behavior, as we know. Um, so make sure that happens. More SDS problems. So we could go on and on and on and talk for another 15 minutes about this, but I do think that uh, we we'll just kind of close this thing out really quick. So self-control, as we originally talked about it, is probably a term that we should get rid of. We should probably think about self-management, and here's why. Najib has a lot of self-control. That sentence makes sense to you. The problem is, is that it's completely BS. Why? Because we've reified the concept of self-control. We've created a hypothetical inside the organism that doesn't exist. Najib has a lot of self-management. It's, it's lacking something, right? What is need, what self-management, what? Skills. Najib has a lot of self-management skills. So Najib is, has the ability to manage his own responses. He can control the controlling responses by setting up contingencies in the environment, maybe utilizing people to deliver reinforcers for you so you don't have to do that whole self-reinforcement thing which causes you to get into a trap. And anyway, So I think that's enough for now on our first article. So there you go. See you.